Happy New Year and welcome to Frequency Matters, the RF and Microwave Update series. I'm Pat Hindle and I'm here with my co-host Gary LaRude. In this episode, we're going to cover our January radar and antennas issue. The cover story is written by Jeff Shamblin of Tauglass, and he outlines the technical approach and benefits of software-defined antennas, hence the uh, brain with the antenna in it. And he shows how you can uh, dynamically track signals in mobile applications and optimize a communication link. So I think this is a very interesting development for antenna technology. Yeah, definitely. What else do we have for technical features? So continuing on the theme of antennas, we have a joint paper from Fractus Antennas and Cavendish Kinetics using a Fractus chip antenna and a Cavendish Kinetics uh, antenna tuner done out of MEMS technology. They have an antenna system that will cover all of the LTE bands from like 700 megahertz up to 2.7 gigahertz. Wow. So quite, quite impressive. Then flipping to the radar theme, we have an interesting article from Analog Devices talking about uh, mitigating interference between automotive radar systems. So you can imagine as the number of cars with automotive radar proliferates, virtually to every car on the road, there's going to be the potential for interference and how do you address that. We have an article from Model Ethics and Raytheon talking about developing a nonlinear model for a high power pin diode limiter. This is actually a Maycom product, but they've developed a nonlinear model for it. And then our final article from Wireless Telecom Group covers uh, using a power meter, an RF power meter, of course, for doing uh, measurements of high peak to average power ratio signals, which are complex, very common in communication systems today, but complex to measure. Yeah, they do some very interesting stuff with their noise systems and their uh, power measurements. Right, that's uh, definitely a nice applications note to read. So turning to the news, as the new year rolled around, there were a lot of aerospace and defense announcements, so I thought I'd cover a few. Uh, Lockheed Martin announced that they delivered 91 F-35 aircraft, and that mm. was up 40% from the previous year. That's good. And they're on track for 130 in 2019. Wow. And the reason this is significant is they've finally gotten the cost down of these fifth generation aircraft down to a reasonable level. So they predict they'll be delivering F-35A aircraft for $80 million next year. And there were also a couple other awards. Uh, Kratos got $65 million in SATCOM and space applications. And also Raytheon got a big contract from the U.S. Army for about $690 million to uh, deliver a Patriot missile and air defense system to Sweden. So lots going on in the military market, very active. Uh, right compared to the commercial market, which is a little bit unstable right now. And turning to 5G, uh, 5G Americas announced a report that has some market projections in it from Ovum, and they predict 10 billion global mobile connections by 2023, and they're predicting about 1.3 billion will be 5G connections. So wow. in four years, it's about a 13% market penetration, which is interesting. Yeah, that sounds like it'll take off pretty well. What did you see in the news? Well, you mentioned the commercial market. To that uh, extent, Apple just recently announced that their uh, revenue for the December quarter is going to be down 8% from the guidance they provided at the midpoint. That uh, translates to $7 billion, which is a big number, more than most of the RF microwave companies make in a year. They attributed the decline all to lackluster iPhone sales, uh, particularly in China. They said the shortfall in China basically created that. They also said the economy in China is weak and the trade tensions between the U.S. and China are exacerbating the problem. Interestingly enough, they did indicate that consumers are a little bit more reluctant now to buy a new iPhone given the average selling price increases of the last several years. Particularly now, you can buy a new battery for a pretty cheap price and extend the life of your iPhone for a year or two. Obviously, that news was not positive to investors, and the day after the announcement, Apple stock dropped 10%. It rippled through to the RF component suppliers, so Broadcom, Corvo, and Skyworks also saw a hit in their stock price, which ranged from 9 to 11%. So I'm sure it will recover in time, but uh, was some uh, news, and it'll be interesting to see how the next quarter develops. Yeah, it definitely causes a lot of waves. Exactly. So turning to events, uh, CES is coming up very shortly, January 8th through the 11th in Vegas. And Corvo's already announced that they'll be exhibiting and showing off RF solutions for a wide variety of IoT challenges from smart home to connected car to drone applications. And I'm sure we'll see a lot of other announcements from component and test manufacturers. So we'll be following that and we'll do a full report in our next episode. How about you for events? 
Well, I think CES will be interesting. I think there'll be a lot, as you say, in the smart home area. I think we'll also probably see some uh, ADAS or autonomous driving announcements. Although, from what I've read, maybe not as much as in, in past years. But I think maybe more substantive announcements this year, hopefully. And so the next event I'll be attending will be DesignCon at the end of the month in Santa Clara. So look for a report in the beginning of February on DesignCon. I'll be doing some videos and photos and a wrap up. And just one final announcement. Hopefully by the time you see this, you'll still have some time. The uh, deadline for abstracts for our EDICon China show is January 10th, which is next week as we record this. So if you haven't gotten it in, you have a few more days and we'd love to have your submission. And I think that wraps it up. Yes. So we want to thank everybody for watching, wish everyone a happy new year, and we want to thank our sponsor for this episode, Maycom. The next time you need RF and microwave components, consider Maycom. They're your partner from RF to light.